All right. So it is 606, and uh, we are calling the uh, Economic Development Committee meeting to order. Um, our, uh, this is for the town of Monmouth. Uh, our first order of business is to uh, consider the minutes of the March meeting, which was attached to everyone's email. Uh, uh, do we have any feedback on the minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? Motion. All right, we have a motion from Garrett to accept the minutes. How about a second? Uh, Ali, you're gonna need to second. Hi, <laughs> I did. Okay, <laughs> I so uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, and it's a unanimous. We've accepted the minutes from our, uh, from our March meeting. And so next on our agenda is uh, a discussion of the existing Monmouth TIF district. Right. Reagan, you wanna take it away? Sure. So I had attached the, um, actually the TIF application to, or a link to this, to your agenda. For those of you who were, um, you know, mm -hmm. had enough time to read it. Um, but, uh, so basically what we had talked about at the last meeting, as, as everyone recalls, this is a very small, yes, um, map, but it's, it's the entire district and it's kind of centered, um, around, um, this is Main Street yep. and Monmouth, um, kind of offshoots of Main Street, not all connected together. Um, and as we talked about last month, the TIF district does not need to be contiguous. Um, it can be different lots in different parts of the town if we wanted to. Uh, what we had talked about last month was the um, idea of maybe swapping out some land that may be in the district now because we are at the maximum allowable acreage in one district. Um, Which is 2%. 2%. So uh, if there were uh, parcels or even pieces of parcels that we wanted to perhaps include in the TIF district, we would need to find some parcels to take out of the TIF district. Um, but uh, all of that said, the idea of including new parcels in the TIF district came about because we were um, brainstorming the possibility of perhaps um, adding some utilities or um, infrastructure to parts of Monmouth that doesn't currently have it. Um, and to do that, we would need to have land in the TIF district or right adjacent to the TIF district um, for that to qualify to use the money that we have for those types of expenditures. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. So it would be it would be a matter of perhaps um, looking at land uh, near where we would want utilities uh, that may otherwise be cost prohibitive to put in for the town. Um, but since we do have TIF revenue to put towards that or um, fund that completely, um, that might be um, something to explore. Yeah. So. Uh... And and just to clarify, uh, I probably want to stay from the stay away from the idea of fund it completely. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I know that the idea uh, behind the select board funding a feasibility study for an additional couple of loops of public water supply in North Monmouth mm -hmm. was to uh to elevate the town's position on any potential grant application um, considerations in the future. So whether that is a state funded program or whether that is a federally funded infrastructure program, um, state funds might be available for PFAS related uh, sites and federal funds might be related 
uh, be available for uh, either just plain old infrastructure, plain vanilla water systems, or uh, water systems in um, economically challenged areas, or maybe water systems um, having to do with uh, enhanced public safety. So uh, either of those is sort of what the thinking was. Let's put $100,000 aside for uh, uh, a feasibility study so we can say that our project is closer to shovel ready than some others that might be uh, you know, in the competition. And then um, uh, we could apply for these grants. Now it may be possible and it may be, uh, some grant programs sometimes require matching participation from the community. And that would be uh, a potential use of TIF district funding would be if it's, if it's a requirement of certain grants that the town could uh, be able to match uh, you know, some level of participation. I don't think it's realistic. I mean, the, the, the scale that we are talking about is the 10 to $20 million scale. Uh, and that would not be something that the town of Monmouth could afford on its own. That's just not in the ballpark of, um, you know, realistic. So we definitely need to uh, be looking for other avenues um, for funding and perhaps, perhaps as a contingency, I think, putting certain parts of North Monmouth's street area into a TIF district would make, would make that possible if there's an opportunity that, that comes up with. Has that been fully analyzed in terms of what's been impacted in that area? No, that's part of the feasibility study. That's part of the $100,000 is to sort of say, okay, um, where is there groundwater contamination? Um, also, who would be willing to participate and at what price? Sort of checking on the price sensitivity of, sensitivity of people who live in that area as to whether they would sign up and how much they might be willing to pay and how much does a, how much does a connection cost. And um, uh, certainly there's already a sewer system there and mimicking some of the areas covered by sewer, I think would sort of be sensible. Um, we'll see. We'll see. So that's ongoing. I think, I think the RFP for the, the feasibility part of it um, has been put out. I don't know if a contract's been actually awarded, but I can find out and we can sort of keep track of, of the progress of that particular project. Uh, there's also been um, some uh, efforts by Monmouth's um, conservation uh, uh, committee to explore uh, using tax incentives to create trail systems that enhance agriculture as well, agriculture and open space. And um, I guess my question for you, Reagan, is do trail systems have to have a ge geographical footprint? No. No, they can be. Um anywhere in the municipality. Okay. So they don't have to be in the district or near it. As we are talking about, I mean, that's also another idea of creating um, economic development by incentivizing um, uh, the creation of trail systems in combination with agriculture to, uh, uh, to create value for Monmouth's residents, as well as uh, some of the traditional businesses that have been here. Do we, Reagan, do we need to have something? I, I mean, I read through the, I, I had a sleepless night and read through the, the tip description. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see anything explicit about trail systems or anything like that. No, you don't, you don't have, well, I, in terms of what you've had approved for fund, uh, what you can fund with TIF revenues, um, you don't have that 
as an allowable expense in your district because it hasn't been approved. So we would voters. need to get the voters to approve a change and then get the state to approve that change. And then we would then be able to use TIF funding for right. the creation of trail systems. Yes. Okay. And the trail systems are not uh, relevant to the 2% limit. Okay. Nope, they have no, nope. The, the projects have nothing to do with the, the limit um, of the of the geographic area of the TIF district. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, okay. Well, that's that's great. Um, did you get a chance or did anyone get a chance to look at, a, so was that before we came on, we were talking about the power lines? Yes. Um, so Kent had mentioned that, um, as, as I had said, we are at our um, maximum amount of lands that we can have in this TIF district. So in order to add new land, we would need to um, get rid of some acreage <clears throat> that we have already in the district, which is which is fine. That's that's what an amendment is for. Um, there was Kent had mentioned that there was some um, capturing of power lines, um, the the lands in which power lines were over, I guess, or on um, that did not pan out into um, realizing any value from those power lines. So that's easy um, where we can identify that. I don't know how much actual land that would result in, but it is something. Um, but then there's there's just the question, obviously the, the, um, the land that we would not want to touch is actually the CMP corridor, which is the kind of these long, that's where we're getting our value in the district. So we certainly don't want to remove those, but in terms of other. Um, well, the, the, the one part that we don't want to remove is the substation itself. The substation, and, and I'm assuming these, these have something on them or they don't. We're going to need to talk, the town budgeted to hire a consultant to take a look at the CMP installation mm -hmm. uh, and value it. And I would suggest that um, once that process or maybe during that process, this consultant knows the prices of industrial facilities and is sort of a, a niche assessor for these types of um, facilities across the state. Um, he's a professionally trained assessor working for some municipality. I want to say Skeleton or something like that. Anyway, the bottom line is um, I would suggest that we rely on his guidance to ask him exactly what could be removed without affecting the valuation of the TIF district because my recollection from, and again, this is about nine years ago, my recollection from the initial valuation of the TIF district was that the value was concentrated on the substation itself mm -hmm. and that the power lines were not able to be valued in the TIF district. So these are all power lines. So the substation is right next to South Monmouth Road. Is this South Monmouth Road right here? I can't quite read that. Yes. Okay, so the substation is right next to South Monmouth Road. Whatever parcel the substation sits on is, uh, is the one that has the most value. Um, all the other parcels underneath those power lines, uh, my understanding was they were not able to capture the value of power lines because the value of power lines for property tax purposes um, was uh, was socialized into the system of power lines and not uh, specifically into Monmouth. When they upgraded the power lines, Monmouth didn't get the incremental upgrade. Monmouth got the average upgrade across the state. Is essentially how it worked. Okay, and so what is our assessor basing her valuations on? 
This is an interesting question. This is why we hired a consultant because it's pretty soft. She's basing her uh, information on uh, the residual value left from a self-reported number that CMP gave us back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And every year since CMP has come and said, oh no, no, the new valuation is this. And without the expertise to be able to challenge their self-reported data, she essentially says, okay, and so this is why, this is precisely why the town hired this consultant to take a nice hard look uh, based on the facts on the ground uh, and take a fresh look at exactly what, what, what equipment is installed at, this, at the location of the substation. So this consultant has been hired? Uh, yeah, we have a, con well, we, we have an agreement. The voters have to approve the budget for the assessor's office. Once that budget is approved, then the new fiscal year will have the funding that will uh, that will uh, fund the agreement that we have with the assessor. The guy's name is uh, Bill Tyman. Oh yeah. Okay. And um, this is obviously tip revenue that we're using. Correct. And this could cut both ways, though, right? I mean, is there any way that his assessment could be lower than what CMP is saying? Of course. So one of the reasons we felt strongly about hiring him is that his track record shows that that's just not the case. That's okay. not happened yet. Okay. Good. Every time he's been hired to evaluate a CMP installation. It's the incentive for CMP to not report the accurate. Um, if they were to lowball their valuation or to not really keep track of what's there and what's not there, then they don't have to pay as much property tax. Sorry, guys, and I'm my head is not facing you. So if you have a question, please just unmute and yeah. and speak up. So, um, you thank you. Okay. So he, so um, Bill um, will be voted on in June as part of the assessor's budget. Okay. Which is, you know, likely to pass along with all the other. I mean, it's kind of a standard. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And, and he never gets any pushback from CMP? No, because he's the expert in, I mean, he breaks down his valuations. He does a site visit. He gives them the roster of assets and says, here's, here's, here's why we think it's worth what it is. Right. Well, that will be very helpful then for us, for our purposes, yeah. um, to determine where the, if indeed these long uh, areas yeah. of property are need to even be in the Yeah, I doubt that they, they will. You know, the prospect of finding some other property owners of smaller parcels here in, you know, along Main Street or up on 202 and saying, hey, you mind if we cut you out of the TIF district? Yeah, that's probably not going to fly. Well, but for them, it doesn't matter one way or another, quite frankly. Maybe, I don't know. There might be some perceived value from those property owners. Uh, and trying to persuade them to let go. Good luck. Uh, they're one vote, but that's fine. They're just one vote. So is this business park that you mentioned a couple times, is that in here? Yes, it is. So but the business park. No, no, the okay. business park is in the description. Okay, that does, that's it's in the description as a potential use. But it's not in the TIF district. It's not a. Property. It's not a specific parcel. It's not been identified as a specific parcel. So if we were to, at whatever point with this business district, I'm still trying to understand what the would we have to put it in the TIF district if we continue on park? based on the TIF that was designed. So what I think what is on the table now is that we're moving away from the idea of the of Yeah, the that's fine. Plan. I'm just kind of curious. I guess it's more of a TIF question. So if anything new comes about, just for example, development, you'd have to add it to the TIF district. If it's not already in. Yeah. Right. So that would be an impact on the acreage, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, and there, there are three kind of tiers of, and it's all about, Capturing, 
capturing value and spending the money. So for, to capture value, the property has to be in the TIF district. That's how you get the tax revenue. To um, spend the money, um, you can, there, there's criteria for spending it in the TIF district, outside but related to the TIF district, and then general economic development like the trails, for example. So there's kind of three different levels that you can use your funding in. So I was just thinking that you wouldn't even have to pull from the TIF later if this business part right. was right. Yeah, so yes. like well, we're more good. complicated. Yeah, we're good. So, okay. Well, then. So uh, I have a suggestion about what we might think about as next steps. Sure. Um, our, uh, our town meeting happens on June 14th, something like that, second week of June. Uh, don't quote me on the exact date. Um, and the town meeting's done by ballot. And so it's essentially an election um, where people come in and they, they vote on warrants. Uh, any changes that we'd like to propose um, need a vote uh, by the town citizens. And, uh, and so those uh, questions on the warrant uh, the time frame needs to be published 60 days in advance, and we've sort of missed the boat on this cycle of uh, town meeting. It is possible that we could, that a special town meeting could be called, which would require some expense in terms of running an additional election if it's a special event. But if for some other reason there's a special election, then, um, then you can sort of piggyback on that. That happens in time. And so, uh, uh, so I don't think that we're looking at the potential of making any changes this June. The train has already left the station. One opportunity, though, that I think this June would present to the Economic Development Committee is to um, generate the uh, to to see if there is an appetite for the citizens to make this change, right? I mean, if we just make a recommendation to say, take the business park out, put in the water system, the uh, trail system idea, the agriculture incentives, whatever, um, uh, there may be some pushback from people who just don't like that idea. On the other hand, if we had a survey from the town and, you know, uh, an unofficial survey, meaning it's a survey that the data is collected at the, at the polling station and it's an optional thing that people don't have to participate. It's not part of a ballot, it's nothing, of, you know, it's not any official part of the election, but nonetheless, it's a reasonable survey. And we have those results and those results say, yeah, I kind of like the idea of putting together uh, a plan for implementing a water system for North Monmouth. And I like the idea, you know, it, asking people to prioritize what ideas for economic development um, they have, and maybe even giving them an opportunity to write in whatever other ideas we haven't considered, um, that might actually generate the political momentum for us then to come back to the select board and say, okay, based on this survey, here's our recommendations. Select board, would you please accept our recommendations and put it on the warrant for the next cycle, election cycle, whenever that might be. And then we're off to the races in terms of, of uh, uh, you know, being fair and transparent and responsive to uh, what the, what the, the mama citizens are telling us is important to them. I can tell you we did that last election. And one of the things that was super clear, the, the, the survey mostly focused on the uses of the, uh, the old academy building. And in that last election, um, they talked about, you know, the, the citizens in that survey talked about wanting additional recreative um, opportunities. Right, outdoor stuff. What can I do outdoor? What can we do for senior citizens? Um, and they also talked about road maintenance. What you know, 
do we want to build new roads? No, nah, not really. We want to maintain the roads we've got, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, which was super helpful in terms of feedback with the select board to say, oh, okay, well, whatever we're doing, this is, you know, this is the right wall to be leaning and ladder on. So I would be happy to uh, come up with a draft survey that we could take a look at at our next meeting. We're meeting again in May? May 17th. Okay, and that would be in time for us to forward a survey to the town manager and the select board, if you guys are okay at taking a look at a draft that I might come up with. And, uh, and then that survey could be used if the select board and the town manager are okay with it um, at the election to sort of say, oh, let's measure the temperature of the citizens of Mono. Can I ask a question? Sure. And hello, there we go. Is, is the purpose of the Economic Development Committee to restructure the TIF? Is that like the purpose of this committee? Not the only one. This is okay. just the first one. But, it's, but it is the first one. It's like the one we're focused on the most. Uh, no, I think we just said it was the first one. No, I, I think originally we were thinking we might want to put this um, have this prepared for June. Uh, and then when we, so we started it first, um, but then when we um, kind of looked at it and realized the amount of work there might be to do this amendment well, I think that um, we're, we're tending to go later in the year with a special election or even the November election um, to put that on the, put that on the ballot then. So, um, the short answer is no. Okay, but it is a hope, right? Does this Economic Development Committee need to somehow approve or convene in order to alter the TIF? So this is the, the first gateway to altering the TIF? Yeah. Is that how it's working? Yes. This will be, you will make a recommendation to the select board um, about changes to the TIF district as in the application, the amended application. And uh, thank you, that's, that's what I wanna know. Cool, so then, so you bring up a good point. We're having an election in November. If we have recommendations ready to go 60 days prior to that election, or I should say, if we have recommendations to the select board and the select board is comfortable making an action 60 days prior to that election, then, uh, we could have changes uh, in place after the November uh, election. And that would basically be uh, the end of August, right? right. That, we would, that we would need to have recommendations. Um, but there does seem to be like some lowering fruit here in the current TIF, right? To adjust? Yes. So that's, that was kind of why we were thinking. And I guess, oops, excuse me. And I guess the other question would be, um, figuring out what Van Tynan's time frame would be to get his response to the committee mm -hmm. to determine what the value is. So, yeah. you know, if if he if he's a you know three month lag, then that won't necessarily line up with. Yeah, I think we're asking a simple question. I mean, the question that we really need, and and I'm sure there's a pretty clear answer if my recollection of the initial TIF approval process is correct. Okay. Um, you know, does the, do the, do the parcels underneath the power lines capture any value for the TIF? Right. Yes or no? Right. Um, and so for the survey for, um, for the voters, um, I can also shoot you some um, possible expenditure categories um, that, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it particularly complicated in terms of, which I'm sure you won't, in terms of them trying to understand um, how a TIF works, but we have TIF funds. Here's the universe of opportunities to spend TIF revenue on. Yep. What do you guys like? And, and then, I think we put a business park in there and we put a, you know, agricultural something. Uh, we put uh, 
trails and we put um you know uh expansion of the public water supply to underserved parts of Lama. Great. Excellent. And we get an answer. Excellent. Okay. All right. Is this uh, are, is this horse dead? Are we ready to move on to the next topic? Uh, topic. Okay. All right. Here's the here's Chairman Ludwig. Come join us, stuff. They're they're right here. They're zooming. They're zooming. Yeah. If you sit right there, you'll be right in the camera. I'll fill you in on what we already talked about with with regard to the pictures. Um, next on our uh, agenda is uh, marketing and promotion of businesses on the town website. Right. So this uh, was has been brought up in a couple of different um, venues, I guess I would say. Um, I think that, that this is something that we kind of brainstormed during our first meeting. How can we um, you know, assist with uh, maybe marketing businesses in Monmouth? Um, whether we wanted some sort of directory on the website, maybe something that we promoted to people who are here in the summer. Um, and so, uh, and we are also looking at um, kind of uh, reviving the economic development page of the website, which has gone uh, by the wayside um, and is not in use at all. Um, so that was a question, and I guess it also ties in with the next topic, which is the farmer's market pilot. So if you don't mind, maybe I'll talk about both of these at the same time. There has been a group of um, interested individuals who have been meeting weekly about the idea of um, piloting a farmer's market in Monmouth this summer. And what they are thinking is that um, they would like to piggyback on the um, Apple Fest, the beach party, um, and a couple of other kind of standard events and invite Mammoth businesses that sell um, produce or, or kind of value added food you know, kind of manufactured food that they're manufacturing in their homes, for example, or in their, in their commercial kitchens um, to participate in these farmer's markets um, to figure out if this is something that has legs for the future. And as part of that discussion, I provided this group with the list of businesses that I've been working on that I know are in business in Monmouth. And their question was, how can we, again, you know, talking in, in kind of uh, from an economic development perspective, how can we capture um, business for these Monmouth businesses, particularly from people who are here in the summer? Um, so they asked about the website and what can we do? Um, are there, are there, brochures, um, are there maps um, that we could um, create to um, have some sort of a list of businesses that could be visited? Um, my question was, what is the Winthrop Area Chamber doing for Monmouth businesses, if anything? Um, and how many businesses are members of the Winthrop Chamber, which I think is struggling a little bit. Okay. I think so. And, and, they, and they haven't... Um, they don't have a full-time executive director right now or any parts. They have an interim um, person who uh, is kind of keeping the keeping them afloat. Um, and it's unfortunate, personally, as an aside, that they're, they're the Winthrop area. I wish they would kind of change it to something a little more you know, inclusive. Of, Lakes region. Yeah, yeah. Like but they, they have the, not Winthrop, not Winthrop centric. centric. Yes, yeah. exactly. So um, all of those questions have kind of been floating up in the air. And so I wanted to bring that to this committee um, to see what the appetite is um, for working or, or ideas people might have for, you know, promoting businesses in Monmouth um, um, and, and, um, and, you know, getting them out there on the website at the very least which wouldn't be particularly difficult. 
um, except for the fact that we need to make sure that they stay updated, which is, which is always a struggle. Um, and then uh, I guess I, I'll talk a little more about the farmer's market afterwards, but I'll, I'll stay on topic with the promotion of businesses. If people have ideas or thoughts of how we might be able to facilitate that. Uh, do do mama, uh, farmers take part in the winter? Yeah, they have a weekly thing, don't they? They may um, have a farmer's market. Right. I, do, I don't know the answer to that. Oh, I'm pretty sure they do all, all uh, summer long. And of course, Hello, we, friends. We have. Hey. Oh, D D uh, oh, Doug's sorry. talking. Can you, can you hear him? Uh, I can't. I'm sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. Oh, I, it's okay. I, I, okay, good. Yeah, we'll. So, Dennis, do you, do you know if Winthrop has a farmer's market or some sort of weekly thing? Uh, they did at one point. I do not know if it still happens. It was in the parking lot of uh, the Vanderbrew, formerly okay. the old Paris Farmers Union. Um, but if we're talking about promotion of business, uh, I want to get back to that and just say only can speak from the experience that I have doing something similar. But the town of Reedfield has exactly this. It is a Reedfield business uh, director. You went, you went mute, but I got you. You had Reedfield has yeah. the a business yeah. directory we for their a, businesses only. Uh, well, in fact, it, it's basically yeah. I think it's it's Reedfield businesses, but it's also. Um, you know, different opportunities there. There's a direct, there's a, uh, you can request a listing right from the website and then you can view the listings. They are uh, split up. You can look at them alphabetically. You can look at them by uh, what their business is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, it, it's pretty good because it's free promotion for right. the business. Um, and what it also does is, because people, one of the reasons we did this is because we found predominantly people will, in order to find out information about the town, go to the town website. And it just seemed like a perfect marriage to, to have that. While you're on that page, you can also find out information about the Reedfield Enterprise Fund, which is a, a, a basically like low interest to no interest business grants and loans that we, we give out. But it's all there in one little place. It's part of the website. Um, so I, I, I could help with that or, or at least, you know, figure out a way. Getting that information is as simple as a Google form, um, you know, figuring out what we want to do. And we had to, I, I will say this, just out of, just because this is, again, my past experience doesn't mean anything for, for this experience, but just what I can know. We had to take out a few businesses because there were, uh, there, there were some inappropriate ones listed. Um, and like what? You know, <laughs> I know, yes, believe it or not. But, but when, when we did some investigations and things like that, it was, we found out that there was, uh, it, it wasn't any, it wasn't any malfeasance on, on our part. It just, you know, this business was using a, you know, a, a, a fake identity basically. So it was just, you know, like anything, you know, people are going to be knuckleheads if they want to be, but I think it's a really <laughs> good thing from, for Reedfield, uh, to have this. Well, cool. I, uh, um, what would it take for us to, to Launch, implement, yeah. implement something like that? If it already exists, if we've got a model that already exists and that works for, you know, a similar community, what would we need to do? I believe you'd have to do, uh, you could, uh, capture all of the business information on the Monmouth website. And then whatever business went through uh, or, or submitted, um, you could then post them as the business directory. So uh, things like name, contact information, position, email address, business name, business address, website. We have some categories uh, that include things like small engine, carpentry, excavating, entertainment, and sports descriptions you can upload pictures if you like and then there's a a, a thing just to make sure they're not a robot so yeah it's a gotcha. really you know it's a simple thing that i think could be worked through the website itself so uh do we need to 
do we need to uh, get select board approval or can this just be a town manager implemented? Because we already have a, a defunct economic development page. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's and in fact, I, I'll tell you, it, it's 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 something that can be worked on. I don't think there's any I don't think you need to have select board approval for opening up a page on the website. Um, and especially if this is in line with the stuff, it's just another portal to do it. So right. I would I would think you could just say, let's give it a shot. I like that. Okay. So, uh, Doug, would you be willing to, to talk to Justin about, I mean, I, I think Justin's going to go to Dennis and say, hey, Dennis, can you do this? <laughs> Justin is going to go to Dennis and say, hey, Dennis, can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's fine. I just, it's easy for me to do. And, and I've, I've done this work uh, before and, and part of it is, you know, it's one, I know that Lori's not going to have time for it and Justin's not. And, and since I'm on the committee, it might be nice to kind of have that link going. So I can mention that to Justin as a possibility, but you know, listen, I'm also a big boy and know that it's like, Dennis, we got this. I, I don't have to be involved either. So no, 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 no. Yeah. Whatever I think this is a, I think this is a go to the, go to the read field place, do a copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> do a copy paste change the word Reedfield to monmouth <laughs> <laughs> that's funny it's reedfieldmain.org and if you it, it, when you pull up to the home page you'll see at the very top navigation about us departments boards and committees and then business is right there at the top we've already stolen a lot of stuff from Reedfield now yeah, yeah that's, right, that's right yeah you might want to be careful yeah, no, no. What, what all that stuff about all the different committees? Oh yeah, yeah, committee that, policy. That from, yeah, yes, that was from okay. Refuel. Nice. <laughs> so, is uh, is Dan? Dan, are you with us still? Yes, he's here. Can he talk? He's driving. Can Dan talk? <laughs> he's back on the phone. He he doesn't seem to be unmuting so. Yeah, he's not muted. Oh. Wait, there was a blink. <laughs> I see him. No. Yeah, he's there, but I just. Dan, you're still muted unmute. if you're trying to unmute. We can't hear you, bud. Uh uh. That's not working. All right. Well, Dan, one question, if you can hear me, one question to consider, and this would be from your perspective right, is. Oh, there oh. Is. go ahead. Right. There he is. We heard your voice. Um, uh, from your perspective as the, the chair of the uh, Monmouth Beach Party, how do you how do you feel about having a you know farmers market pilot thing going on up the road? I mean, I'm assuming this might happen in the parking lot of Cumston Hall. They, or... Yeah, they haven't identified a location yet, but I personally think that's the most sense, makes the most sense as the mm -hmm. highest visibility. But yeah. they haven't committed. So I'll share with you that, as you know, Dennis, uh, July 2nd, during Monmouth Beach Party, Thompson Hall's already got a couple of events going on that oh. afternoon, and, and, and parking is atrocious for this event. Um, I'm certainly in favor of a farmer's market, you know, if we yeah. can find a location that, that day, and awesome. certainly I would help help publicize that, you know, as in conjunction with our event. Uh, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure where, where to put it. Been we could go. We could. We could go up the road to the town office, yeah, or the the skate park, that's the old skate park across, you know, near the town office that, parking lot. That would be fine. Um, I, ideally, it would be nice if it was someplace closer where people can just walk from yeah. event right. to event. Um, yeah, we don't. We don't want to over congregate, though. How about, how about the tarred, recently tarred parking lot of the center fire station out back? Yeah. Could do. Or across the street, the church. Yeah, the center church, yeah. maybe, the parking lot back there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's a Saturday. It's not like there's a whole lot going on. Oh, it might be best for you. Best for you in the morning. Oh, uh, in the morning, but not in the afternoon. No. I mean, I guess it would, it would matter on timing. We'll figure out timing. So one other piece that this group has talked about 
or asked about is the, you know, they are not a um, established nonprofit or organization. So they're yeah. struggling with um, things like insurance and um, marketing. They don't necessarily have a lot of money to do this. So we were trying to brainstorm ways that this pilot could be run um, and and not necessarily um, you know have have to have to create all the infrastructure for yeah. something that may not happen. So I don't know if other people have experience with things like this um, or or how how it might be able to be incorporated into different events, the different events that they're trying to piggyback on, or how how what people's thoughts might be about how we can make a go of this to see if it's viable um, without them, like I said, having to commit a whole lot of extra to it. Uh, as far as promotion con concerns, um, I think they're, I think uh, even if they were an informal group that uh, they could apply for TIF funding, from the town for, for nominal amounts. I mean, we're not talking thousands of dollars, but if someone needed, you know, 300 bucks for advertising and create a flyer, you know, fund the printing, I don't think that that would, I think that would fall within the, the, the realm of our, exi our existing TIF, um, you know, description. And I don't know that there's, I don't think that there's necessarily been a requirement that you have to be an official nonprofit group with a, you know, I mean, the, the fire department started this Monmouth Beach party on a, on a wing and a prayer and, uh, and was sort of an unofficial group for a while and it was not a problem. So I think the precedent is there that, uh, you know, if they're a group of Monmouth residents that have a, an idea that might be viable um, and wanted to give us an application, that would be fine. Okay. So <clears throat> if, I, if I can add, um, I, as far as insurance, uh, like for our, our event, I take out a million dollar event policy and it's like $600 for that one, one time event. Um, if they wanted to piggyback on our event, you know, I, I, I don't know if necessarily they would be covered. Um, because I, I think each individual vendor has, you know, we have specific language in our vendor application that they're they're on their own and responsible, you know, for their own food and whatnot. So that you know, townspeople aren't liable, you know, if something was to go wrong with with the the food vendors. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I'm thinking, I'm just kind of thinking through this how we could make this work. Like, I, I guess I'd, I'd be curious how how many vendors are we talking about for this this pilot program you know if it's if it's half a dozen you know maybe you know six or eight at the most and they just need like a little 10 foot by 10 foot space um just thinking out loud and and, and ken you're you know you're on the committee as well what if they were to do something that saturday afternoon because our event's not till five o'clock but what if they did something from you know noontime to 4 p.m. on the day of our event, whether it be, um, you know, again, downtown somewhere, whether if there's only half a dozen of them, they could take the parking lot space across from uh, Pleasant Street, you know, where that overflow parking is for downtown. I mean, they could easily set up six or eight 10 by 10 foot spots out of the roadway. And that's that would be an afternoon attraction for people to go downtown and, and visit the farmer's market and then stick around for the beach party afterwards or, or you know, bring the produce back home and then come back for the beach party event. Um, so they could piggyback on our event. I just don't know, you know, insurance wise, you know, if they have to get out additional coverages or not. I think my on? suggestion for the farmer's market group is to come up with like a consistent weekly time. Because what I found with farmer's markets is if it's 
only certain days and then it changes, it, it's hard to follow. I mean, yeah. just talk about winter, we didn't know that it still existed. Yeah, I think it, and I think that would be the next iteration. Right okay. now, they just want to see if people are even interested oh, okay. in participating okay. and, right. um, okay. you know, before they, they go ahead and start organizing something that okay. no one right. <laughs> no one takes they, part in. You they know? want to see if there's a market. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So that was no, why they were kind of trying to. What, what would be even better is, is kick it off with Mayfair, you know, right there yeah. in Princeton where we've got the plant sale. That, yep. that would be an ideal place to kind of get their feet wet and set up. Yeah, see if so there's a, three yep. potential events there. Yeah, so I just wanted to, to point out, on, on I want to talk about July 2nd first, which is the beach party. On July 2nd, the theater at Monmouth has their first, uh, the library will be open from 9 to 1, so that's number one. Number two is that the theater at Monmouth is having their opening season show. It's Pandora. Um, it's the family show opens at one o'clock that afternoon. The Friends of Cumston Hall and Cumston Hall are having an open art gala thing that's happening at five o'clock that afternoon. At seven thirty that afternoon, the uh, or that evening, the theater at Monmouth has their Black Fly Follies, and then the the uh, that's what's happening at Cumston Hall. So I agree with the idea of giving it a start at Mayfair when there is much less. I understand that it's also coming up pretty soon. It's like a, a basically a month um, away, but that's also happening and it comes in and we're trying to really make, make Mayfair um, in the front of Cumston with help from Dan Dunton and his barriers to help people park. So what I would say is if we need to mark off a place for, for that and include the farmer's market, that's fine as well. The, the basis of the farmer's market started when um, I, I, I was interested in having it at Cumston, but then that idea was, was then Donna Seppi and some folks downtown got into it. Um, and, and, you know, I, I understand, like, I, I hear all sides of the should, you know, should it be a regular time if it's a pilot thing? But I think, you know, I think the more stuff that happens at these events that is shared always, I think, helps create a little bit of buzz. So yeah. I, I know that the Apple Fest would be good for it. Mayfair would be good for it. Any of these events, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how Cumston can be there for it. And that is all. So yes, I think... The only the only other question I would probably pose back to them would be whether or not um, individual businesses own insurance might cover them for selling in these circumstances. Right. Um, because again, I don't see them creating an organization that goes out and gets a policy. Um, so that will just be something we still work through. But um, are there any other thoughts or ideas, these have been great and I've written everything down to bring back to them. I'll, I'll, ch I'll check with my agent just to see, you know, if, if vendors are covered under that million dollar umbrella. And if so, you know, that that might be something at least for our specific July 2nd event. And again, get us numbers. Cause you know, again, if we're only talking about six local businesses uh, and they don't need a ton of space, uh, if we don't set them up downtown, I might be able to finagle space with the other food vendors for that evening. I only caution that people coming to our July 4th event is usually people just coming to, you know, spectate and, and listen to the live music, watch the fireworks. Um, they're not necessarily going to buy produce and carry it around with them for the evening. So um, right. that's why I was thinking an earlier time frame might be better. Yeah, I do, Dan. I think I I uh, agree with you that an early time frame might be an opportunity because we don't. I mean, we don't. We have a huge crowd, you know. As sunset approaches, I mean, it's a madhouse down there uh, at that time. Right. But in the afternoon, it's mostly you know kids and families, moms and dads and kids who are doing the cardboard canoe thing, and. You know, it's the, the crowd is pretty is pretty light at that time. So, um, 
there, there might be an opportunity for at the capacity to add a few people for the afternoon uh, to the mix without without really impacting, you know, without overcrowding. Sure. Those the vendors with the food trucks, they have their own insurance. Yes. Or, yep. They do. Yep. And yep. yeah, I I mean I don't know what these. Um, what those vendors experience might be in terms of insurance costs. But I mean, I, I just did an academic decathlon event and it was like a hundred bucks. Yeah. It might be nothing. It might be something they could um, even include in the, in their application for the tip funds. Yeah. Yes. Online event insurance is easily available. Yeah. Yeah. It's just expensive when you have explosives. Yeah, I can understand <laughs> why yours is a and million and yes. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's right. That's hazard pay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do we have here? I think that's it. The next meeting confirmed May 17th. May 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, I do have one organizational thing. Uh, we've been approached by Andy Smith of the Milk House. And he is interested in joining our committee. Um, uh, he's a small business owner, obviously. If you've been to the Milk House, they have a great product. And uh, it's a, a rapidly growing business, uh, uh, apparently. Um, I, I would, um, um, Reagan, I'm wondering if we could forward him an application so yes. we can put him through the process of getting the select board blessing and appointment and all that by the time the mark the the may uh, 17th date rolls around and then we'll have a new voting member it's just a couple of days before may 4th there you go 21st may 4th great other business before we sign off i had one one question going back to tiff districts um yep. the masonic hall was was questioning me about the TIF district and I know they don't fall under it currently and that was one thing I was going to propose if we were able to expand um, down Main Street uh, I was going to suggest go up to the farm Clemento's farm and capture you know the rest of the hydrant district going up uh, Main Street and that that would include the greenhouse as well um, so the, you know there's three or four businesses going up that stretch but the, the main question I have in addition to that was the because um, I was talking to them about the facade grant and how um, businesses have applied for that well Masonic Hall is not a business and so they they didn't think that they could apply for that but I told them the museum is a non-profit group private group um, that has applied for TIF money in the past. Is, is that correct? I can a non or, or even a residential dwelling that's uh, in poor shape, uh, such as the building across from the, uh, the post office. Um, I believe that gentleman um, had some something from the TIF district. So, so my, my question is, can they apply? Can they apply for TIF money to fix their their roof or or uh, paint or side their building to improve the uh, condition of, of the Masonic Hall? So Doug knows the history here and the precedents that have been set. Yeah, well, I mean we've done uh, Jack's traps, which is not we really stretching the, the district, <laughs> and I I and we I can't see not you know if. Uh, uh, Clement Isle or the Stevens Greenhouse or Masonic Hall wanted to apply. I, I think they would, should be, or well, they could be, or would be considered. Even though they're not, work. even though they're not. Specific. Right. They're not in the, they're not in the, the description of the district that captures value. They're on the other side of the equation. They're, they're in Monmouth and uh, at the discretion of the select board, I think um, we're allowed to approve expenditures. So, so the map, Dan, relates to the value that is captured, but not necessarily, but not necessarily those that want where, to apply. Okay. Yeah, yeah not right. necessarily where the money is spent. And and okay. I guess I'll say sure. that 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 application is unique in 
the mamas application is unique in the um, latitude that it gives for um, businesses that aren't in the TIF district or even necessarily in the downtown to apply and get funds, which is which is neither good nor bad, but it, it's um, not something I've seen before, um, which is, you know, if that, and that's unique to Mammoth. So um, that will be something I think that we'll all be looking at as we get to that application. But at this point, like Doug said, I know that Jack's Traps has applied, private residences have applied that are, that are kind of in the downtown and in the sight line, I guess you would say, of the downtown and, and um, contribute to the atmosphere of downtown. Um, so those, those are all applicable at this point. Okay, that, that answers my question, thank you. Dan, where are you? I am in uh, Gorham, New Hampshire. I just came over the mountain from Vermont and working my way back, but I'm sitting in a parking lot for the last hour. So I'm anxious oh. to get back on the road. I was All gonna right. say, that, well, the, with that. With that, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Dan? <laughs> I make a motion. Second. And we have a second from Dennis. If I can. Our non-voting member. Can you, wait a minute. If you're not voting, can you second anything? I just did. <laughs> He's in the minute, so. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Drive